everybody, my name is Nozimele Kamgana Mayaba. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for your support. If you're one of those people that has been following me for quite some time, you will remember a video that I did a while back pertaining to traveling overseas and being HIV positive. So the video was inspired by my own story because in my previous job, there were instances where I had to travel overseas um, to go and fundraise or attend a conference and I always worried about traveling with my medication, with my ARVs because I was like, oh gosh, if those authorities, you know, find those, um, um, you know, those ARVs, I'm hoping they're not going to think I'm bringing drugs to their country. Um, but in any case, if they find out, maybe I'm going to have to explain and then they find out that I'm HIV positive and they're not going to allow me into their country. Okay. And then there was also a friend after I did that video that reached out to me, she's in the academia space and she's like, you don't understand how much you've helped me because for quite some time I have been rejecting opportunities, um, you know, to go to conferences overseas um, because I'm also afraid of the very same thing people finding my medication and me being rejected for, you know, for the scholarships and then having to explain possibly to my bosses why I, you know, I was, I was rejected into entering that country. So that video was mostly focused on if you want to visit a country, what are some of the requirements? What are some of the countries that are banning people that are living with HIV? But then it did not dive into, you know, when you want to stay in a country for a longer period of time. Because we know there are scholarships available, you know, to go and study overseas, particularly also for masters, also for undergrads. Um, there are opportunities to go and work overseas. I remember when I was working for the manufacturing company, there was a, a period where I had to go, and I, I had to travel to Germany for a whole year. Okay, um, so there are opportunities like that. I wanted to focus the, this video particularly um, to an interesting program <laughs> that I've been following for quite some time. Okay, um, due to a lack of opportunities, I remember a couple of videos ago, I was mentioning like the unemployment rate in South Africa being I think about 32%, um, particularly among young people. And as soon as you graduate, it's really hard to get a job. Okay, it's really hard in South Africa to get a job. So over the years, there's a growing, you know, um, thing where as soon as you graduate, you go overseas and, and teach English, you know, as a foreign language overseas. And then it's mostly common in to, um, when you teach uh, um, English in Korea, in China. And then so a lot of graduates do this. They make a lot of money. And I've been doing my own research because I was interested, you know, in terms of what does this require? Um, how much money do they make? How long do they stay there? What is their whole experience around the issue? So I started doing my own research and this is also for a graduate um, that just graduated or is about to graduate. There's still a bit of a shaky ground in terms of what the next step is. Um, it doesn't seem likely that they're gonna get a job or an internship. Possibly this is another another opportunity that you can consider. So what are the requirements to teach English overseas? I'm going to base this video on China and Korea because I've spoken to a lot of people that have um, you know taught English in these countries. So one of the things that you're going to need is obviously a valid passport for you to be able to travel. You are going to need a degree. No national diplomas, no BTECs, a degree from a traditional um, university. It doesn't need to be a degree in any specific you know, field. It can be engineering for goodness sake, it can be art, it can be, become accounting, it doesn't matter as long as it's a degree, okay? Then they also require two years of teaching experience. If you do not have teaching experience, it's okay. There's a course that is called TEFL, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it correctly, but it basically stands for teaching English as a foreign language and you take that um, over 100 to 120 hours face to face. You also need to have a clear criminal record and to prove this you need to have a police clearance. Now there are a lot of agencies online um, that say they're assisting students to teach English overseas in China and Korea but I know a lot of people also have been scammed and then, but this particular agency I've watched videos of people that have been helped um, and I've seen their website if you go to global search and then, global search is one of the agencies that is going to assist you if this is an opportunity that you would like to explore there are a lot of documents that you're going to need to prepare as you can imagine you still need to have interviews with the school you need to still visit the embassy and all those things so um, agencies such as global health assist you with all of that preparation 
Now let's talk about salary because the look guys you can't be traveling overseas and getting paid peanuts Okay, and if 15,000 rand over an internship in South Africa is not 15,000 rand in China and Korea the currencies are not the same Okay um, Based on the videos interviews that I've done um, It's very common for people to say e accommodation your housing is paid for by the school that you're going to teach at yeah. Um, you sometimes in this phase from one school to the next you will probably pay for electricity and water um, and then your food as well now let's talk about the salary let's talk about actually the money that's going to come to, into your bank um, people have often said you need to negotiate and yeah. um, salary once again it varies from one school to the next but the minimum that you can actually get is like 30,000 rand a month and considering that a housing yako is paid for you only need to take care of your food um possibly your travels and all the things that is not bad i mean also considering the the minimum um salary that most graduates start at in south africa um that is fairly good okay um so once again you need to negotiate um and it depends on like how you know open the school that you're going to go to is um but people have been saying you can negotiate like good money and based on the youtube channels i've been watching and the interview that i've had um a lot of people have been traveling you know in other countries surrounding areas they're having a very good time okay so in terms of the perks um i I definitely like recommend you know this program let us go into what was interesting for me with this program before you leave South Africa you need to do a medical checkup when you arrive in China or Korea you need to do another medical checkup and those two medical checkups need to say the same thing they need to give the same result okay as part of the medical checkup you also need to do an HIV test okay and if it is found that you are HIV positive you will not be allowed into the program or if it is found that you are HIV positive while in the program you will be kicked out of the program upon hearing this news I remember calling a travel agent because I wanted to understand if this is true or not I could not believe that this is true and I remember pretending as if I'm one of the students that is interested in the program and I was basically telling her you know this is my story this is what I have I just finished my degree and I'm interested in teaching you know English in China and I remember saying I'm also HIV positive guys she didn't miss a beat that late basically told me no I'm sorry you're not going to be accepted and I wanted to know more in terms of why am I not going to be accepted she not, could not give me a straight answer she was like no unfortunately I cannot help you she dropped the phone and that was it once again it triggered an interest to understand what other countries are basically preventing people from either entering staying studying working in their country because of their HIV status data that are found on UNA has showed that in 2019 there were 48 countries that had restrictions for people that are living with HIV to either enter study work or reside in their countries because of their status out of those 48 countries that have restrictions for people living with HIV 30 countries to date still impose bans for people living with HIV to either study, work, reside or even enter their countries and 19 of those countries um, basically deport um, a bantu that are living with HIV. So after reading this it was interesting for me to find out which countries are they specifically referring to. They're saying the 48 countries and territories that still have some form of HIV related travel restrictions are Angola, Belize, um, Cook Islands, Cuba, Egypt, Indonesia, Mauritius, um, Maldives, Malaysia, um, New Zealand, um, Qatar, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Singapore, Solomon Islands, Sudan, um, Tonga, Tunisia, um, Ukraine, United Arab Emirates, Yemen. There's quite a lot, guys. I'll just basically just put um, the link um, where I found all this information. So those are the countries that have some sort of restriction for, for people that are living with HIV. Now, it varies once again from one country to the next. For example, from this list, I can already tell you, if Belize um, and Egypt, which I have visited, they do not have any discrimination pertaining to you, um, you know, visiting um, for a short while. Um, because I have attended conferences in Egypt and in Belize. Belize is in South America. So I've never had any issues 
issues but i guess it's when you want to stay you want to study you want to work in the country then it follows a deeper process where an hiv test might be a requirement for you to enter the country or for you to study or work in that country or for you to stay in that country and if you are found to be hiv positive then your application is basically denied now let's try to understand why are there restrictions um one there's a stigma i've seen videos i've talked to people that have been in these countries um that have taught english in these countries and they've shared about how there's a level of racism in how they are treated you know? i remember watching a video um where someone was like you know what when i was negotiating salary you could see banner there's a resistance because of the color of my skin because i was black but then my counterparts um who like my counterpart who is white um got a better salary just because of the color of their skin i've seen videos where you know there's a fascination around our hair now I'm gonna play a devil's advocate and say okay maybe they're not used to the texture of our hair but then also it borderlines like racism um, in how black people are treated in these countries now let's go back to HIV it is alleged that they do not want people living with HIV um, because HIV is a highly infectious disease okay <laughs> HIV is a highly infectious disease and that is why they do not want people living with HIV. I don't understand that. It is also alleged that they want to have some kind of control over their own population. So they don't want people living with HIV. Another assumption around the restriction is because it is assumed that they want to be able to accommodate their own citizens um, to the best of their ability before having the burden of having to care for other people from other countries okay let me make it very clear that i reject all of those assumptions and any assumptions for that matter that people might have about how people living with hiv may be banned from entering studying working or residing in another country because of their hiv status Let's take South Africa for example and let's use the same arguments. Um, South Africa does not have any money so it cannot accept any foreigners or refugees. South Africa does not have enough vaccines so it'll start it with its own citizens, okay? South Africa can barely employ its own citizens, how dare it employs non-South Africans? Do you see how those same arguments will never work because of what South Africa represents and that is a democratic country? Now, I introduced this topic on social media and I enjoyed reading up your comments. There was one comment that said, you know, yeah, to some extent, I understand because China is a communist party. I reject that in all levels because I cannot understand how China can be so open um, in entering international deals, international agreements, treaties and so many different things, but cannot engage on this particular matter. I, I, I cannot accept that. And the reason why I'm hard with this topic because um, I've had to now compare Korea and China. In 2015, when Korea got pressure from UNAIDS, it actually lifted this whole requirement of testing um, for HIV before entering its country or before entering its program. I spoke to another lady that just finished, you know, her program in Korea, and she said, "But in Korea, you could actually, you know, get away with not testing for HIV and entering this teaching program, even." if you're HIV positive the public schools um, that you could possibly teach at um, do allow you to teach and um, regardless of your status because it is not now a requirement for you to test even though I've never applied to these programs but this is very personal for me because of the kind of work that I do so we can't be fighting discrimination on one hand and then accept it on the other hand because of special circumstances for me that doesn't make sense we need to overcome ignorance. What are you thinking? I'm going to go up and rock up in a class and by opening my mouth, I'm going to infect the whole class. I'm going to infect all the children. We can't be validating this argument because of the nature of a country. Now we're debating about China. Yeah, we do understand to some extent why they do this um, because they're used to violating human rights. I can't accept that. There will never be an end to the HIV AIDS pandemic without respecting human rights. We need activists. We need head of states. We need UNAIDS 
to bring more pressure into these 48 countries that are imposing some kind of restriction um, for people living with HIV to enter their countries just because of their status. If you are someone that is thinking of applying to these programs, I really hope that this has helped. More than anything else, this is another initiative for me to bring more awareness because once again, I could never accept that someone is going to be discriminated in 2021 just because of their HIV status. So guys, until next time, thank you so much for joining me.